Hi there friends and welcome to my setting up your sect tutorial for Amazing Cultivation Simulator. I'm Icon and this video is the first of many which are meant to slice down the content of this game into tasty little bites which are easy to comprehend. So I will focus mostly on the survival aspects of this game in this video, how to set up a sect from scratch, what you should be worried about, what you should be doing, and uh, what you should be avoiding, such things, and mostly avoiding the topic of cultivation and uh, feng shui and all these things as much as I can. I, I can't ignore everything completely because with this game everything is intertwined, so every topic always matters a bit, but I'll do my best to focus on the survival aspect and keep this video as short as possible and as information dense as possible. So before I get started, I just want to mention that this video was created because somebody actually um, asked me to do smaller videos with smaller complexes of the game. So if there are any areas of the game, like, I don't know, feel free to just drop it into the comments down below. I'll try to make short and comprehensive videos out of that because ideas are most welcome. All right, let's get started. So I started this video in the character generation screen because of uh, three reasons which are really worth mentioning. First up, I want to talk about the races. Prefer humans if you're not if you don't know how to handle Yao Gai. If you already know what's up with Yao Gai and how to handle their heavenly tribulations and whatnot, go for Yao Gai. It's actually better if you're able to handle them because of their insane base stats. Normal normal humans have really low base stats and uh, the TLDR beyond, beyond, um, beneath that is if you can handle Yao Gai, they make excellent auto disciples because they have such good work stats that you can utilize them during your first year of the sect massively, even if you're not able to bring them through the tribulations at all. You can just banish them afterwards, just saying. So, racist prefer humans if you're a beginner, go for Yao Gai if you know what you're doing already, because I feel like they're really worth it, at least one of them. Then, step two, I want to talk about the skills you want to bring for your first sect, um, or for your first characters. I always feel like really important skills are of course construction because you will construct a lot during the beginning and it's really cool if you're having somebody who's doing that work quickly mining if you're starting in a mountainous map most important farming at least one person is super handy because the game works like this the the lower your your numbers here the worse your results and the slower your work. So with farming, you can really farm extremely slow when you have no skill. So the other stats here, it's really good to have one person good at medicine. The usual things apply. I'll leave you to explore that on your own. I just want to mention that the labor skills in general are your most valuable pioneer skills that you can do. Step three, the perks. Um, if you're picking one of the beginner laws here, which only cost one point of one perk point, I want to show, well, I want to draw your attention to the builder and the, where was the other one? The builder trait, well, let's talk about the builder trait first. The builder trait increases not only perception, which is really good because base stat increases are valuable, but you also receive a higher amount of initial building resources. If you don't wanna rummage around resources at the beginning this is really really good to have because you just you just start out with nice stuff so the other thing i think well spare food is really good when you're really really new to the game because you will start out with a lot more base resources and your people will starve a lot slower so especially if you're really insecure of keeping your people alive go for that but i wouldn't advise that the most interesting part there is the constitution increase and the uh, maybe the pill but this is one i would really advise for beginners and then there's hedonism hedonism is pretty cool because it adds clothes and accessories so if you want to have better clothes for your people at the beginning very useful as well so what else what else i really liked to have the student of elixirs begin but that's not about setting up your sect that's about setting up your first cultivator but i want to give it a honorable mention at this point so for today's example we will go for hedonism and builder and 
The other guys here, I didn't really look at them. I just keep them randomly, but that's just my own way of playing. I always pay attention to the first character fitting to his law really good. So that's really good if you can do that. All right, so that's the first half of the video. So now we're spawning here and our, um, let's choose law. Well, no, I don't need to choose the law. So now we're starting out at our beginning area. So we start out with extra building materials here, igneo copper and ice crystal bars. They are really handy because sometimes you have a lot of trouble coming uh, close to these materials. We have marble blocks and iron bars to begin with, also pretty useful items, and we start with a pretty large stockpile of timber. Usually you wouldn't be that uh, well settled in. Usually you would set up your bonfire, and uh, there goes the mysterious cultivator. He will always watch over your sect at the beginning and practically kill everything which will attack your people. You can utilize that to your own benefit. Some people even like to kill him off with, cheat, with nifty and nasty ways because he always comes with pretty useful items to begin with. But that's just one thing I wanted to mention at this uh at the side. So we have now the wood bonfire down and if you don't start with these um, starting materials you have to put up a material workplace first to produce your to cut your wood into stones and uh, cut your wood into timber and your stones into blocks and you will also need the workplace to produce tools at. So I really like to have tools for basically everybody, so I issue these right away. And since we have that much material to work with at the beginning, we don't need the material workplace. We can skip that and go directly to the handcraft station. And the handcraft station is just a uh, better version of the workplace, so feel free to drop that down if you can. Very, very important for your sect, always drop down a well as soon as possible because your people will just outright die from the lack of water and that's just that. Really necessary at the beginning also is a timber workstation. It will replace the material workplace together with the... Um, no, it will replace the material workplace Yeah, together with some other workstations which we will un unlock in a sec but we're not there yet. And you will also need training spots for your outer disciples to do their training at. Meanwhile, everybody's getting their um, tools. Luckily, your fellas all equip their tools automatically once they once the necessary materials are there. So good job. All right, so let's keep focused here. Things you need are at the beginning, structure-wise, you need a room for everybody to sleep at. You can choose for yourself if you want to do a dormitory solution where you just um, have one big room for everybody. That works for outer disciples, but it doesn't make people too happy in the long run. So I would um, more or less advise against it and advise you to a single room solution for everybody. And something like this is already very effective. You don't need large rooms for your people, but keep one thing in mind. The game wants you to build bedrooms doors to the southern side. Don't ask me why. Here I'm, uh, it's, it's part of the Asian culture. I can't explain it to you why, but it's good for the harmony of, uh, of the room. So these are your starting rooms. We put down a bed into each room and then I strongly advise you to put down a water vat somewhere near the living area, one water vat somewhere near the working area, because there you people will have a drink from time to time if necessary. So let's put down a bed into every room. It's always really good to have another room for your um, guests. And if you're wondering about the Feng Shui and what, how you should build and whatnot, it's very simple. If you have no clue about Feng Shui yet, don't build with, don't combine materials that have arrows pointing at each other in the center. So if you build with metal, don't build wood in the vicinity. And if you build with wood, don't build earth in the vicinity or don't build wood in the vicinity of earth, like here. And 
these are really just basic 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 rules around feng shui there's a lot more behind that but you will you will come along with that okay so next thing you will need is a little room where you will put the stove into the stove is best served in an earthen room or a room which has the here every material has an element uh icon assigned to it if you, in case you're wondering about what i'm rambling here so an earthen room for the stove because there we have some aspect of feng shui i can't um skip here the stove always has a fire quality on it and you see here fire and earth that's the that's the good arrow they like each other so you won't ever do anything wrong with that out of reasons that i can't explain to you better the kitchen store wants to be at the <clears throat> left side of the room and then you will also need a room for your crafts to be done these rooms are well you could also do that with out rooms but people people do like rooms with rooms you can influence the elemental attitude of the room you can influence the mood of people by putting decorations into those rooms while nature is way harder to manipulate but you could also do everything under open skies. So after we have built up all these things, I, if I remember correctly, I don't know which workstation exactly triggers this event. We unlock advanced furniture and workstations. And uh, so I was rudely interrupted. So a workshop. With workshops, their doors go onto the right side and always try to avoid having several doors at one room because it will make the feng shui of a room bad. Always just one door per room. It's okay. <laughs> no. As far as I learned so far, only doors matter which lead to the outside. Rooms, the doors that lead to insides of buildings don't matter too much. I haven't fully wrapped my head around it so Please, if somebody knows it exactly how this works, drop it into the comments down below. Until then, just have one door, having one door in each room solve the problem for me. So, now we have access to several more buildings. I just want to mention the most important ones. You need the stoneworks to create stone blocks out of stones. You need the furnace to create bar bars out of metals, the forge does weapons, the loom creates fabrics out of cotton, the sewing table creates clothes, and yeah, the mill creates flour out of wheat, but you can't cook with wheat directly. Medicine table is only necessary if you want to do magical medicine, it's, or well, no, that's, that, no, that's wrong. That's the regular medicine you you don't need these things too too badly. I made the experience, the most important things for me to begin with all, always were the furnace, the stoneworks, I'm putting these together, and the forge, and then the handcraft station, the loom and the sewing table. With these, I, with these workstations, let's uh, show you the handcraft station, handcraft station offers the tools and lots of other things. Offcuts are needed to put down floorings. Floorings are powerful because floorings always transfer the stats of the used materials. So basically if you put down a if you create igneo copper offcuts from a igneo copper bar, you can create a flooring which has a fire elemental attitude and you will learn that these things are very, very useful. But if you have no clue and you're just starting out, just do wood offcuts and do floors with that beneath your rooms. Let's wait until they did that. And then last but not least, a few things to keep your survivability up. So we have now everything except for food. Food will run out quite soonish. So food can be acquired from many, many ways. The most effective and easy way is to hunt animals. To hunt animals effectively though, you will need um, a certain equipment for your fellas, and that's bows. So let's wait until these are constructed. Bows are the best item for Ardor Disciples to have in the early game 
because as long as your disciples are equipped with bows, they will win fights against regular enemies in 90% of the time. Animals and enemies. At the beginning of the game, though, you can also just attack whatever you want because the mysterious cultivator will just attack and kill everything. So if you put down some hunting order, the cultivator here will in instantly attack whatever you assign to hunt. At the beginning of the game, you can live very, very good off of the hunting things. I would strongly advise you to put down some fields on the bright green spots as soon as you can and plant at least some wheat there. The other plants there are also, well, if you can manage to grow them, it's really cool. I just will cover them real quickly. Herbs, never roll without herbs. You need them for your medicine. If this will run low, you're really in trouble Her healing people. Herbs grow wild. Herbs can be also acquired uh, via adventuring at Mount Full Moon, but you can also grow your own. It's not really that important. Way more important, in my opinion, is growing cotton and lotus and mushrooms. Mushrooms need an indoor farm, a little bit more complicated to put up, but you will get there one, uh, eventually. Um, cotton will, is a money-making thing, and you can create clothing out of it very good. And lotus can be only grown in water, but it's awesome. It's beautiful, you can eat it, and it's growing quite fast. If you have water accessible, you just need to drop down a field here, like this, and that's that. Then they will start planting lotus in it. I also want to mention that you can create fertile soil with poop, and fertile soil is this stuff here, and basic soil is, you can do that with just a lot of work without any extra materials. Animals produce poop, and you can just collect that and could turn areas into fertile soil. So once these things are all set up and done, you are basically at the beginning of your journey. You will only need to sip the forming pill into the person you want to make your first inner disciple, and then you can go adventuring or do whatever you want. Oh, I, I forgot mentioning. Once you have the offcuts done, put those back onto schedule. It's easier to show it when you have the necessary material. Once you have the offcuts done, you can also go for the floorboards. Yeah, well, they don't do me the favor, but I guess you can imagine at this point. Floorboards go into rooms, whatever you want. With the materials, you can influence the elements. I already mentioned that. Um, training spots are also good, uh, well placed in the vicinity of the spirit wood trees. I can only advise you to do this, or spirit grass is also pretty good. But with this little setup here, you already have basically all it takes to stay alive indefinitely. The only thing you will be lacking in the long run will be food, and that's basically your first challenge you have to tackle, how to acquire food. I'll give you a little hint. If you constantly adventure to Nanping village, you will never run out of food. So, that's enough to begin with. From here on, explore the game, watch some other tutorials, whatever you feel like you're doing too. I hope this was helpful to give you an overview about what's really necessary and whatnot. Your rooms here will all also need a few bits of decoration, so feel free to put down decorations for your disciples to make them more happy with those rooms. And you also can put down a room which contains a few tables to eat at. Your people won't be dying without, but they will be happier with. So yeah, drop me comments down below if you feel like there's really important stuff to add or if there are still questions. I'm all ears to that and I'd like to answer it. And apart from that, leave a like or a subscribe if you haven't done so already. I would be deeply appreciating your support. And if you like this kind of content, I would also say check out my channel. You'll find tons of other ACS content and other building simulating things. Maybe you'll find something you like there. All right, have a nice day and I hope I was able to help you. See you soon, bye-bye.